from the prophet Joel. Therefore saith the Lord, Be converted to me with all your heart, in fasting and in weeping and in mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, patient and rich in mercy, and ready to repent of the evil. Who knoweth but he will return and forgive and leave a blessing behind him, sacrifice and, lib and libation to the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Sion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather together the people, sanctify the church, assemble the ancients, gather together the little ones, and them that suck at the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth from his bed, and the bride out of her bride chamber. Between the porch and the altar, the priests and the Lord's ministers shall weep and shall say, Spare, O Lord, spare thy people, and give not thy inheritance to reproach, that the heathens should rule over them. Why should they say among the nations, where is their God? The Lord hath been zealous for his land, and hath spared his people. And the Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be filled with them. And I will no more make you a reproach among the nations, saith the Lord Almighty. Deo gratias. The Holy Gospel is from St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When you fast, be not as the hypocrites, sad, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not to men to fast, but to thy Father who is in secret. And thy Father, who seeth in secret, will repay thee. Lay not up to yourselves treasure on earth, where the rust and moth consume, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up to yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither rust nor moth doth consume, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where thy treasure is, there is thy heart also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be taken away. Amen. Good afternoon, dear friends. I'm used to saying good morning. I, um, in the past, I've uh, mass has been a little bit earlier, and I have to say that I wasn't planning on giving a uh, public homily today. I, I might give homilies. You know, I can give a sermon whenever I want, but to record it is it's being recorded right now. If you haven't noticed, um, and then to go onto the website and things like that was something I wasn't planning on. But I was inspired, and um, I I'll tell you why. I wasn't sure I was going to share this with you, but it has a lot to do with what, why I was inspired. Besides the fact that um, I am going to be doing a series of conferences over, over Lent, um, but this was a little bit more. I woke up this morning um, about 4 o'clock, and um, thought I was um, screaming. And I remember precisely what was going on. And in my dream, um, I was fighting uh, with, with, not with God, but fighting for him against 
the evil in the world. And I can't really tell you precisely how that is. There wasn't anything in particular. But I saw um, what I can only say were evil spirits, evil things. And they were coming out of people that I knew. And it didn't scare me. It didn't frighten me until I realized that these were people that I knew. And they were just changing and becoming disfigured right in front of me. And then I realized that as I was recognizing my own calling as a priest, that I could either be frightened or fight. And I knew that God called me to fight in this way, in a particular way, in the way a priest fights, in a particular way in the way I've been called as a priest. And so I found myself making my way towards that evil, towards those demons, to fight them. And I realized I was in the air. And this, these demonic things were in the air. And I saw other demonic things rising. And even in my dream, I couldn't figure out, what is the, why are we in the air? Why are we going towards heaven? And I remembered St. Paul's reading, that we fight the demons of the air. Demons, the spirits, are soaring above us. Sometimes we think that they're below us, they're not. They're all around us, they're all, they're, they're all about us, they're all ready to take us. And so we have to be aware of that. We have to know that. So that we also can fight. Because each of you have a responsibility, even as lay people. You have to fight as well. I'm going to fight. And I'm going to swim and make my way towards those demons. But you have a responsibility as well. You have to fight those that are within yourselves. You see, I'm the, 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 the dream, I was seeing them come out of people I knew. And so you also have to fight. You can't give up. No matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, no matter what you think or what, you know, what this day may be like or that day may be like, doesn't matter. Every single day, you have to get up and try again. That's what I do. That's my responsibility. And that's your responsibility as well. Yours is not like mine. Believe me, it's nothing close to mine. Sometimes lay people think that they can do things a priest can do. It's not true. You have to let me fight. And like St. Polycarp, I don't know if you know the story about St. Polycarp. And I love, you know, and he's, he's being martyred. And they want to save him. He said, no, I have to die. I have to die this way. And I'm sure he wasn't the only saint that was like that. But at least for me, I feel that I know that that's what's going to happen. And it's going to happen to all of us. I can tell you, if you decide to give your life to God, as we read in this, as the prophet Joel reminds us, and as our Lord tells us in, in, in fasting and weeping, if you do that, you will follow him in his crucifixion. You will. It'll be different for each of us. But for the priest, for a proper priest, he will be crucified. And most priests run away screaming like I thought I might do in my dream. And so I thought that, you know, that's what inspired me to maybe say something today, because um, we are going to have a series of conferences this, this year here. And if you can come, we'd love to have you. Um, they'll be after uh, Holy Mass on Sunday. And um, I think what we've talked about is if, you, if you're going to come, um, 
please bring a sack lunch or something like that. If you want to eat, you don't have to eat. We'll have water and, you know, something to drink or something like that. And then we're going to ask you to be, to be quiet. It's not a time to chat. It's not a time to go back and forth. Just come, be a part of what we're doing, and then remember we're in Lent. And that's what this time is for. And thank God we have another Lent to continue to fight, to continue to try to repair, to continue to try to help others. And so the theme of, uh, of, the, of the conference, it's called Receiving Grace. And what I want to do in this conference is to help you understand what it means to receive. I don't know that many know or understand what it means to receive. Receiving grace in solitude, in sacrifice, in service, and in sanctity. That's what I, I hope over the several weeks that we'll be together that we'll get something from that. And that I'll receive something from that. And from us being together and sacrificing together and remembering and praying together, that God willing, when we come to the sacred triduum, we'll feel better because you're supposed to feel better. At that time, you are supposed to feel good. You're not supposed to be waiting for the end. You're supposed to feel better, spiritually better. And sometimes even physically better. And that's precisely what God intends for us in this Lent, in every Lent. And so we just have to remember that on this Ash Wednesday, as we begin our journey, it's not very long. You know, based on our lives, how much we've done, how much we've failed. And our, our Lord is asking for just this time. And as we, he would say to his apostles, come with away, come away with me for a while, rest. And I hope that you'll take this time to do some good spiritual reading, to reflect on your lives, to reflect on the lives of the people around you, and to pray and sacrifice, and to be silent, and receive all of the wonderful graces that God intends for you. God bless you, and God love you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.